Wow, people are punctual today. <clears throat> Recording right, calls. We're live. Good morning, everybody. It is September the 1st. And this is an, a month of equinox as well. September the 22nd or 23rd is the equinox. So there will be weather changes again. Um, and we're in the final the final phases of our year to be able to really knock it out the park. It's still, there is still time to, to uh, achieve whatever goals we want to achieve. There's plenty of time to do that, but we've got to start today. Slaughterhouse of failure is not in our destiny. Ogmandino, slaughterhouse of failure, not in our destiny. Got to remember that always. So today we've chosen, uh, actually Dan chose this five convincing reasons why you must challenge yourself. And we're gonna talk about five convincing reasons. But before we do this, I just wanted to mention that we've got to know who we are so that we can challenge ourselves because if we don't know who we are, then we're a mess. And what do we want? because we may be quite satisfied. We're all different personalities, mentalities, uh, dreams, desires, ambition. Some of us want to climb mountains. Some of us want to skydive with, with, with a minimum type of uh, parachute, we, racing car drivers, whatever. We all have our, our little quirks in life that we want to do. And some of them are more dangerous apparently than others. Some people see it as a danger, some people don't. But we're all stimulated by something or someone. Sometimes we fall into the necessities of having to advance ourselves and our family, not just because of our egos, because a lot of times it's just the ego, but other times it's the necessity to advance with our family. Either way, we have to move forward. How do we determine the direction and speed of our journey? That's the question. How do we motivate and inspire ourselves to go forward? How do we clear the path for our progress? One of the first things we have to do is take an X-ray of the past. If we wanna know where we're going, we have to know where we're from. So five ways to challenge yourself, Dan. Yeah, you, uh, you know, are you self-imposing barriers on yourself? from a personal perspective, from a business perspective. You know, we all get comfortable where we're, where we're at with the friends that we have, where we're living, you know, what we're doing on a daily basis. Um, but those things hinder our ability to grow. And so I think that you need to challenge yourself. You know, you need to get outside your comfort zone. The comfort zone, um, Lawrence, if you could go through and, and mute some folks, there's some noise coming through while, while I'm talking, but. You know, we build these walls around us because because we're warm and cozy, right? And we stay in that comfort zone because it's comfortable. Yeah. Um, but but when you do that, um, you're going to build this mansion of comfort around yourself, and and that's going to hinder you from becoming the best version of yourself because you're you're staying stagnant. You're you're not challenging yourself, and so you know, for me, one of the biggest things in my life is that I, I enjoy challenging myself. Um, we just got back from Maine. We went up there for a wedding and we went to Acadia National Park. And I said to Kate, I said, let's go on a hike. And she's like, oh, I don't want to do anything too difficult. And of course, I looked up immediately what was the most difficult hike in Acadia National Park. And so um, that's what we did. She went an easier route. I went the more difficult route. And we came down the more difficult route together. And, you know, it was something that she didn't want to do. She didn't want to challenge herself. Um, because she's comfortable not 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 challenging herself, but she's comfortable being comfortable, right? And and so you know, I like to take her out to do these things that are going to challenge her. And it made me really proud of her that she did it. That she, a she didn't get hurt because she's really clumsy. Um, B she actually did it, and she did it with a good attitude. And I was really proud of her for challenging herself and doing you know, getting outside of her comfort zone. And that's, that's how she's going to grow and become the best version of herself. So we need to look for ways in our daily lives and think about when was the last time you truly challenged yourself? 
you know, and, and I'm talking about doing something that's extraordinary, something that you didn't think that you could achieve, something you didn't think that you could do. I'm not talking about, you know, go out and walk one mile a day for seven days, you know, yeah, that may be challenging, but I'm talking about something that's, that's going to build your brain, build your, uh, build you physically, mentally. Um, and by challenging yourself, that's what you're doing. You know, it helps build confidence. Um, action is what will lift you when you need it, you know? So, so when you need something in your life to lift you to that next higher level, challenging yourself is a great way to do that. Because when you overcome a difficult challenge, you show yourself that are you, you're better than you give yourself credit for. And it really helps build your confidence um, when you start pushing your boundaries. So the first point obviously is build your confidence. So how do we build the confidence? Dan's just talking about, you know, going up the mountain the hard way and, and also encouraging somebody, his partner, his wife, to, to participate in that journey of sharing something that's difficult, new, something they're both going to explore for the first time. So build your confidence. That's the first of the five points that we're going to talk about. So how do we build that? Well, we build by learning from our mistakes. Practice makes perfect. Every time we fail, we get up refreshed with the new knowledge and experience, but we've got to make it an exciting thing. We've got to actually have a, have a, a feeling of, of joy when we, when we try something and we've actually not succeeded, but we've gotten up. We've got the strength to get up and make it fun and get up again, start again. Um, so <clears throat> it takes it takes many times to to repeat an, a mistake until we get it right, and then we learn to have confidence in what we're doing. Embrace our failures, valuable lessons learned, you know, and laugh at our failures. Think about when we're riding, when we first learned to ride a bike without a when you call those things the little trailer trainer trainer wheels. You first ride your bike and you fall down and then you fall again and you scratch your knees and you're bleeding. And, but then finally you get up and you, you love it. And you may even be obsessed with riding bikes like, like Joe Scalia, who pulled his rusty bike out of his garage. And today he rides, you know, 30 or 40 miles every morning before he goes to work. But it started off with scratching, being, having been scratched and falling and, 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 and learning from that. So that was the first one. Um, the second one is to grow your personality. Dan, you want to start with that? Yeah, you know, different life situations change us. And they can change us in good ways. They can change us in bad ways. But when you stay in that, that mansion of comfort that you've built around yourself, that fortress of comfort, it's very, you're, you're, it's impossible to change right? Because you're surrounded by the same thing day in, day out, and, and you're not growing because you're not exposed to change, because everything's the way you want it to be so that you have this level of comfort. You know, some of these things are going to make us bitter. Some of them are going to make us better. You know, the choices that we make every day are going to define who we are going to become. I don't think there's anybody on this call that thinks that they are the best version of themselves today. That this is the best you're ever going to be. Um, I certainly don't. Um, so, you know, challenging me myself is super important um, because challenging myself allows me to grow in ways that that other things that I do don't allow me to do. Um, so how do you get to that core of your personality if you don't really exploit all of the possibilities, if you're not challenging yourself, if you're not doing things different, if you're not thinking outside the box? You know, when you push yourself and you make decisions that don't make you comfortable, that means that you've given yourself new goals, you've given yourself new perspectives, new habits, and then that helps you to become the person that you want to be or the person that you're capable of being. So, you know, growing in, into your personality is about challenging yourself. Um, challenge yourself on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis, set goals that are challenging for yourself, not only in business, but in your you know, physical activity. Um, 
you know, the hike that I talked about, the route that I went up was, was really exposed in places. I mean, there was 500 foot falls if you made a mistake. And that makes me feel alive. You know, putting myself in danger like that it helps make me feel alive. It, it gives me the endorphins that I need to push myself. And I really grow from, from these situations where, you know, I saw, I think I saw, I passed maybe five people on the trail in an hour and a half. You know, there was probably 200 cars at the bottom, but very few people were going up the, the difficult route. And so, you know, that goes back to our talk from last week about 99% perspiration, you know, and 1% inspiration. You know, 99% of people aren't going to get do, do the hard route. They're, they're not going to take the hard way in life. I love taking that because th that route because that's challenging myself. And you need to be willing to do, to be that top 1%, you need to be willing to do what 99% of people aren't willing to do. Yeah, so it's, it's the inspiration. It's something that's going to drive you, to motivate you. But, but you've got to have, you've got to look at it as something that is fun. If you look at it as a chore, it's going to take a lot longer in your mind than if you look at it as something fun, as a challenge, as something that will make you grow, something that will, that will inspire you to, to, to feel good about yourself. John, Dan, Dan just talked about the endorphins. You know, that's, that's something why we, we, we go to the gym and we say, oh, I've got to go to the gym. But the, once you're in the gym and you, you're in there and you've got the endorphins going, man, you just want to keep going because you're actually feeling that you're feeling something. You're feeling good about it. You're feeling something. And, and I think this is important where we've, we, we come out of the comfort zone and we tap, in some cases, our unknown inner strength. We all have it. Gee, I didn't know I could do that. Wow, that's surprising. You know, when you've done something and you achieved it, and you've surprised yourself, and you said, oh, I didn't know I could do that. I didn't know I could, you know, make 30 calls a day. Wow, I, I thought, you know, I was limited on something. But when you, when you make it a game, have fun, you try again, and you, you enjoy it, then those become your strengths and not your weaknesses because we fall into the easiest, easiest solution, which is not have to do it, the weakness part of it. The strength is, is what will guide us to be better, to improve ourselves. <clears throat> the third thing that we have is know that you did your best. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, when, when I'm talking about this hike and, you know, Kate and I met, met at the summit, um, there were, you know, I got up and I said, Isn't, wasn't that awesome? You know, are you proud of yourself? You know, and she was kind of, well, you know, I was terrified, this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, I didn't let on to her, but there were times on the route that I took that I was scared or that I was tired um, or that I didn't think I was going to make it. Um, because it was really, really difficult. But, you know, when I get in these difficult situations um, where, where you're trying to reach a goal, and I had this talk with the kids the other, one of, the, one of our kids the other day, when I think we were riding bike, and we were riding bike uphill, and he's like, I'm tired, my legs are killing me. And I said, but when I, when I do with in these situations, you should break it down into bite-sized chunks, you know, break it up into 100 pedal strokes, see if you can get to 100 pedal strokes. And then when you get to 100, say, um, okay, can I get to another 100 pedal strokes? Because if you're just looking up at the top of the hill and you don't know what it, how many pedal strokes it gets to, takes to get to the top, it can seem insurmountable. But when you break it down into bite-sized chunks like that, then it becomes a little bit more manageable. And I did, you know, I do that when I'm hiking too. You know, if I'm trying to summit a peak and I'm, you know, halfway there, you come up on a false peak where you think you're, it looks like you're at the top and then you get up there and you're not, and you've still got several hundred feet to climb. Um, that can be defeat, defeating, but, you know, it's really important to know that you did your best, you know, on this hike, Kate, there were times where I could tell she was frustrated. I could tell she was tired. And so I encouraged her, you know, I said, you're doing great. You know, you're, you're doing fantastic. You know, it's just going to be another hundred feet. And I knew it was more than a hundred feet, but I just kept saying it's a hundred more feet. And then we get a hundred feet. And I'm like, it's a hundred more feet. 
you know, because when you break it up down into small size chunks like that, it's it doesn't seem quite as as difficult. Um, but you need to know that you're you're doing your best. I don't want to live with regrets um, because cre- uh, having regrets will tear you down. You know, it's life is either the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. And I'd much rather be feel the pain of discipline than the pain of regret. You know, you don't want to look back and think, you know, what I said to Kate on the site was like, do you want to look back, you know, when we go home a week from now and say, I wish I would have done this? You know, that's regret. You don't want to look back and think, if I had pushed myself a little harder, you know, would I have been able to do that? Will I be able to do a more difficult hike? in two weeks because I pushed myself this time. You know, there's a great quote from Derek Jeter. There may be people that have more talent than you, but there's no excuse for anyone to work harder than you do, right? So, you know, it's the discipline. It's the attitude that you're willing to work harder than any somebody else. There's a ton ton of people on this call that are way more talented than me, Um, but I'm willing to work harder than you know, 90% of people, 99% of people on this, this call, if that's what it takes for me to be successful and reach my goals, you know, and you never want to think of, you know, would my life be different if I tried harder, if I believed in myself more, if I was putting myself in those situations where I was challenging myself, you know, how would my, my life be, life be different if I didn't do those things, but if you're not doing those things, how is your life different because you're unwilling to do those things? Yeah, everything we do, we should make it a command performance. Whatever you do, give it your all. Give it more than your all. And it's a question of, of the, the satisfaction that you get, but never be satisfied. You get fulfillment, excuse me, the fulfillment you get is not necessarily the satisfaction you're going to get. Because you you fulfilled something, you fulfilled a dream, a, a, a goal, and so on. But that's not the satisfaction because there's always going to be something. So I could have done a bit better. Man, I, I, I did that. I mean, Roger Bannister wrote, wrote, um, ran the first, I think, three-minute mile or four-minute mile in 1932, I think, about that time. But And nobody thought that could ever be done. Well, today, there are thousands of people literally around the world that do that, that break that record that was set by Roger Bannister, but we still remember Roger Bannister. And so it's about giving it your all, a command performance. I'm just, wow, I'm, I'm excelling at what I'm doing, but there's still some more I can do. If I've, if I've reached this point, I can do a bit more. I can actually achieve a bit more. And the other thing is, there's a point that, that we can look at what Dan was talking about with Kate. Even though Dan was leading his his excursion to the top of the mountain, and even though he was afraid, there was a there was he had an accountability partner in some way where he was doing it to be able to show that it could be done. He did it for himself, of course, but it's important to have an accountability partner, somebody that you can count on, that you can that can cheer you on or that makes you feel that you need to go on and do the harder part because because it it can somebody's done it well i can do it i'm going to do it and you've got that accountability partner and i think in our business it's the same thing we've also got to have an accountability partner to to guide us and or, or or to incentivize us to to be able to go beyond our best to excel at what we're doing, to go even further, to really, really make a big difference to ourselves, the people around us. The, the, the other thing is take control of your life. And that is just simply no more excuses. Get behind the wheel of your Rolls Royce with a Ferrari engine. That is you. No, you're amazing. Feel like a lion. Just feel great. We talk about these things, you know, like get in, get in front of the, the, the mirror and give yourself a high five every morning. Smile, be grateful, think about that. So it's, it's you are in control. You have the steering wheel. You have the reins of your life. And it's no 
point, no use, absolutely futile to blame anybody or anything or any event or any circumstance. It's nothing to do with that. It's up to us to do individually. Who cares what the hell this economy does? Who cares what, what the politics are? Who cares what the hell's going on anywhere? It's up to us to make our own, forge our own destiny. We are in control. There are no excuses. If you fail, don't point a finger. When you point a finger, there's three pointing at you. When you point one finger, there's three pointing at you. It's not them. It's not everybody else. It's us. So take control of your life. Be proud of who you are. Be, be absolutely sure of your own unlimited possibilities. Yeah, you know, part of understanding that you are in control of your life um, is proving to yourself that you're in control of your life. And the way you prove that is by the decisions that you make that are going to shape your future. You know, this is, this is all part of the belief that you need to challenge yourself. Um, you challenge yourself because there's no stopping until you become aware that you are the one in control. You know, you're in the you're the one uh, in control of saying I can't do something. You're the one in control of saying I can do something. You know, your attitude, your mindset towards these things are what control and what shape your future. And and it's the attitude, it's the decisions that you make, it's the verbiage that you use when you're talking about these things that puts you in control of your life. You know, when somebody says I can't do something, I can't do it yet. You know, it's it's just a small difference. And how you say something, it can have a big control, a big, big effect on the control of your life. You know, because subconsciously, if you say you can't do something, you automatically think you can't do something. But if you say, I can't do something yet, subconsciously or consciously, that leaves it open ended that you can achieve that if you want to. Um, and then the last thing. Uh, because we're running short on time here is, you know, being positive and sharing that positivity with others. So I woke up this morning and uh, Porter was awake and he's my uh, nine-year-old and he was downstairs playing video games already at seven o'clock. And I went down, I said, Hey buddy, you want to go grab breakfast? So, you know, he jumped up because he loves spending time alone time with me. And of course he came back and rubbed it in the 11 year old's face that he got to have breakfast with me this morning alone. But I frequently, when I'm out, will pay for people's dinner, pay for their Starbucks. Um, and today, that positivity and the positivity that I've shared with others and you know that gratitude came back came back to us. You know, it was totally unexpected, but we sat down at our table and the car right outside. Uh, their lights were on. So I said to Porter, I said, hey, I think this car is that gentleman's down there. Do you want to just go run down and let him know that his lights are on? And so Porter went down and said, excuse me, sir, if you're the green Jeep out there, your lights are on. And so guy got up, went over, turned his lights off, and we ate, we got our breakfast. He got his breakfast. We saw him leaving. And we said, we we're ready to check out. We'll just take the bill. And the waitress said, your breakfast has already been taken care of. Um, and so, you know, it's a power of positivity. It's the power of giving back. You know, it's the power of instilling positivity in others. You know, when Kate and I were doing this hike, the whole thing for me, I, I knew I could do it. I knew I would have no issues doing it. I've done more difficult. Um, but it was per portraying that positivity um, and saying, this isn't that bad. You know, I've, it's, it's, it's easy. You can do this. You've done, you know, more difficult things in your life. And just sharing that positivity with her and, and, and you could see, even though she was frustrated, that her attitude started to change and she started to become more positive about it. One of the last steps was, you know, about 15 feet. We had to step down off of a, a big granite ledge, about three feet down to a to a step and then and backwards and then step over to another step before you got down to the bottom. And I was like, do you want to go around? Because there was a way that we could go around it. I said, or do you want to do this? It's like, either way, it doesn't matter to me. She's like, I think I can do it. And, or I can do it. She didn't even say, I think I can do it. She said, I can do it. And she did it. And, you know, and I was very proud of her because it was something that I thought knew that was going to be scary and difficult for her. But by staying positive and letting her know that she could do it and, 
you know, adding that positivity along the way um, really helped her as we got closer to the end of the climb, you know, I was really proud of her because she just became very positive and I can do this um, attitude. So, you know, the best part of being um, positive and being an accomplished person is that it allows you to have that power. It allows you to have that control and the control over your own positivity, the control over your own life allows you to, to offer that to others that you come in contact with, to replenish their ability to take control of their life and to be more positive. I saw uh, a short video this morning from Jordan Peterson, and it was about, you know, look, bad things happen to you in life. And it's your choice and the control you take and the attitude that you have about it um, is what makes it a good or a bad situation. And in this particular situation, he said, you know, let's say you get diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, that sucks, right? And maybe you're given six months to live. So are you going to spend that next six months being miserable and resentful and hateful because of, because of being can't diagnosed with cancer? And that's how people are going to remember you? Or are you going to spend that time being positive and loving and um, you know, instilling that positivity and love in others that surround you. You know, for me, when I got diagnosed with cancer, I made the, the um, concerted or built the concerted mindset that I was going to be positive throughout the whole thing because I, I wasn't going to let it break me. For me, it was just climbing another mountain, you know, and how am I going to get to the top without getting hurt or without uh, it being the demise of me? So it's, you know, it's one of those things you can control your attitude. And so, you know, controlling your attitude in different situations, difficult situations uh, or unexpected situations make all the difference in the world. So I think I, I would, well, first of all, what you said earlier, the neurolinguistics on the former point, that's hugely important because it's like a self-hypnosis. But on this point, um, the, the thing about, being positive, I see the world through rose-tinted glasses. I've always been accused of that. Oh man, you see the world through rose-tinted glasses. It's not like that. It's a tough thing. It's a tough world. It's a mess. It's all the rest of it. And I say, no, focus on the, the roses and not the weeds. Focus on the things that are really great, not the things that suck. And those will grow. Whatever you focus on grows. Treat others how you want to be treated. Lead by example. Be a team player. Be grateful. You know, be kind, humble. Focus on the roses. Focus on the good things. And if you do that, you won't even notice the other stuff that goes around. And by, by living in that positive experience, that's what attracts the people around you. Or living in a negative experience attracts the people around you too. That's who we are. We've got to know who we are. Who do we attract? Birds of a feather flock together. We know that. We're told that from when we were very kindergarten. So it's about how we feel about ourselves, how we view life, how we view the unlimited, amazing possibilities we have with us. And even in this business, I started when I was 60. And man, this is not work. I was talking to somebody this morning. This is not work. I just have fun. What could I do if I didn't do this? So it's up to us to punctuate our lives with the things that we can help ourselves. We can help other people, which helps ourselves. What goes around comes around, as in the case of Dan just mentioning now. So if anybody's got any comment or anything they want to add. We're about that time. Anybody want to add anything or say anything, please? Dead silence. Unblock yourselves. Unmute yourselves. I'm going to challenge myself. Thank you. Good. Okay. I'm going to be uncomfortable with being, or comfortable with being uncomfortable. How about that? There you go. Perfect. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Lawrence. I appreciate you guys always. Thank you, Jane. Yes, Thank you. Listen. This this has been a, a really good follow up. Uh, uh, for those of you who didn't go to the Tony Robbins uh, uh, talk, 
it is, this has been absolutely phenomenal because it's following that exactly. Can I mention something about Tony Roberts? When, and, and also about things that we motivate other people. A few years ago, Tony Robbins had an event in Orlando. And I said to Kari, my wife, I said, babe, we're going to go to the Tony Robbins thing. Let's go. And she said, well, I'll go. But don't think I'm going to do these stupid things that you do and walk on, play, on fire and walk on the hot coals. And that's absolutely ridiculous. I'm not going to do that stupid stuff. That's ridiculous. You're going to burn yourself. I've done it before several, a couple of times. Anyway, we went there and about every half an hour on the four hour drive, she was saying to me, no, I'm not going to do this. Just so you know, I'm just definitely not going to go. I'm just going to, because, you know, going with you. Okay, fine. It let, but we got there, there were huge fire, like eight feet long and about four, two, three feet wide. And those were the paths where the people eventually will walk on the hot coals. And she said, look at that, that's stupid, that's a barbecue. They're gonna barbecue the people and I'm not gonna do it. And I said, fine. We got there, we sat by 11.30 at night. Tony Robbins said, okay, everybody take your shoes and socks off. And Kari sort of reluctantly took her shoes off. She said, but I'm still gonna do it. I'm just going with you, but I'm gonna do it. And we walked, there were, I think there were 4,000 people in that particular event. And we all went to these various pits of, of car of hot coals and we were all walking and still while we were there she was still had this doubt in her mind now i'm not going to do this I, I, i'm just not anyway we got there i walked through and right behind me was kari and she got a little ember stuck in her toes and she saw she looked and she said but, it's, but i'm not being burned and she didn't when she came out of that she felt her endorphins were like over the moon she was so excited so it's about it's about doing something that will inspire you to do to go beyond your normal level of comfort don't so. just challenge yourself challenge others around you challenge your children challenge yeah. your loved ones challenge your friends you know we can all become more together when we when we spread that positivity when we challenge not only ourselves but challenge those around us and i think you'll find you know if you're challenging yourself and your you know your partner like lawrence is talking about it helps you grow your relationship as well yeah yeah make your move make your move <laughs> okay all right Anybody awesome. else? Everybody. thank you everybody have a great weekend have a great uh, labor day weekend a couple of extra days um enjoy challenge yourself think about your goals for the end of the year make your plans to go to utah in november and uh we'll see everybody next week yeah thank you gentlemen. thanks guys thank, thank you very much thank thanks, you guys. have a nice day weekend